our federal government has absolutely failed us. Um, they, they haven't secured our borders. They don't have an immigration policy that's working. Uh, that's why we have the problem. And what states are dealing with is the fact that our federal government has not done their job. Uh, they are, and they're still not doing their job. And so while they don't do their job, we've got to make sure that our citizens have the opportunity to live the American dream, and that's what I'm doing. All right, and joining us right now to discuss this is Republican strategist Ford O'Connell. Ford, as always, great to see you and great to talk to you. Well, it's always great to be with you, John. Trust me, it's always a great day when I get to chat with you, my hey, friend. Hey, all right, sounds good, Ford, and thank you very much for that. I think the only person that says that besides uh, you is my mom. So we're talking about this with Florida and the immigration issue. We now know the president also is going to uh, delay his attempt to make deportations more humane, and that's the, the official line from the administration here. But we're also seeing some of this develop in states where you have Republican governors like Rick Scott saying basically if you were raised in the state of Florida, then you deserve to pay uh, the most, uh, the cheapest college tuition possible no matter what your immigration status might be. If Ford, when we're talking about the immigration debate, is this the carrot uh, in relation to the stick, that being strict border enforcement, the stick or I'm sorry, the carrot that Republicans need to kind of uh, embrace as we move ahead and look forward to, this, to immigration reform? Well, l let me say this first on the end state tuition. I think this is actually very politically smart for Governor Rick Scott if he wants to win re-election. He's got to tap into the 23 percent of Floridians that are Hispanic, and this is a way to open the door. But I will say this about SB 1400. It's actually a lot more pragmatic policy than people give it credit for. And frankly, I think that the right wing is running away with this and basically saying that you're giving amnesty on the tuition side when that's not really the case. This is a very narrow, tailored policy to really help Floridians improve themselves. And frankly, let's be honest, those with a four-year college degree make 98% more per hour than those that don't. And at the end of the day, this is about helping to improve the economy of Florida as long as it stays narrowly tailored as it is in SB 1400. Now let's take a look forward real quickly at some of the other states that have, have adopted this. Florida not the only one to pass the measure. We were surprised actually to learn that at least 18 states have provisions for in-state tuition rates for undocumented students according to the National Conference of State Legislatures. We see those up here on the screen. Florida in uh, Texas standing out. Uh, New Mexico, I guess, to a certain degree, in California, but you, you, those are the border states here, obviously very important. Uh, but we see this in, in, in Texas and Florida where you have conservative Republican governors. But Ford, is it too early to say this can be a strategy that appeals on a national level in states like, say, South Carolina maybe? I think it is a little early to say that, but again, at the end of the day, this is about winning over your state and making sure that you have pragmatic leadership and pragmatic policy there. Remember, another part of what's going on in Texas and in Florida is an attempt to count by the Republican Party in state tuition hikes, because in Florida alone, basic, basically the universities can hike the tuition percent, and what SB 1400 says, you can't hike it more than 6 percent. This is a pragmatic policy, again, for Florida. Is this a national model? I'm not so sure but it's certainly a door opener with Hispanics. The only question is, do you actually make the right outreach? And at the end of the day, if Republicans want to win the White House in 2016, they're going to need Hispanics in the tent. All right, now Florida voters are also getting a chance to see a side of Rick Scott that maybe they're not familiar with, uh, playing up his family a lot, including his grandson and his campaign ads. Um, there's been some discussion about Scott's need to soften his uh, role a little bit, you know, his persona in, in the media. But what about overall, again, as we look ahead on the national playing field, is there a place in the platform for, for you know, a reassertion of compassionate conservatism in the GOP again? Is the time right to talk about a thousand points of light again, maybe? Well, I, I think there is, and part of that is, is that today Gallup came out with a poll and basically said that conservatives lead liberals by 21 points on economic issues, but liberals lead conservative or conservatives lead liberals by only four points on social issues. And part of this is about showing respect, showing people who you are, and also putting forth pragmatic policy. As you know, at the end of the day, John, the problem in politics and the problem in campaigning is the perception is all, often reality, not actual reality. And a lot of people don't know the ins and outs of these policies I even just discussed with the Florida in-state tuition. Hi there. Um, Ford, you talk about the idea of compassionate conservatism in your book. What does that look like in 2014? What, what does that look like for you? 
Well, I think it means two things. One is putting forth a pragmatic economic vision for the future, something that Republicans are struggling with behind closed doors. They want to put forth an idea of contract for America again, a sort of action item checklist on the economy, but it also means showing respect for certain social issues and understanding that depending where you sit, at the end of the day, you have to get elected and you have to understand the trends are changing on a lot of social issues, Francesco. And we've seen that Ford a lot reflected in some of the polling data that we've talked about, not so much on the issue of abortion, but more so on the issue of gay rights. And now an overwhelming majority, I think it's something like 80% of kids I shouldn't say kids, I should say young Americans under the age of 30 years old favor laws that support legal gay marriage. All right, so we're, we're taking a look at this. Now we talk about some personalities for it, and, and particularly Senator Rand Paul comes to mind. This is a guy who clearly is trying to rebrand himself, uh, potentially as a compassionate conservative, going to places like Berkeley and getting a standing ovation there. Who do you think, though, maybe aside from Rand Paul, is in the best position right now to rebrand himself or herself as a true compassionate conservative? Well, I think that there's three folks that come to mind, and this is going to irk the GOP base a little bit. One is obviously former Florida Governor Jeb Bush, because when he speaks on issues, he has gravitas. Obviously, the Bush name hurts him greatly. I think Marco Rubio is trying to basically come around and brand himself as a compassionate conservative after tripping and falling on immigration reform. And really, at the end of the day, the most talented Republican politician when it comes to stump speaking and connecting with people, unfortunately, is still Chris Christie of New Jersey. He has the innate ability to bring the very needed people in the tent, unmarried women, Hispanics, minorities, that you need if you want to win a presidential election. Because remember, at the end of the day, in a presidential election, the key is to get 270 electoral votes and somebody who can present them themselves well in the stump is in a better position than somebody who's just a policy wonk. Now, wait a minute, Freud. You, compassionate and Chris Christie in the same sentence. Please do uh, explain. Well, I understand that sometimes he comes off a little rough, but at the end of the day, he's able to connect with people on a level that they understand. And remember, compassion does not mean the same thing in every single region of the country. And frankly, in New Jersey, as much as a rough and tumble state as it is, he's been able to connect with people on their own way. And really, even before Hurricane Sandy, when he went out to Iowa and he went out to New Hampshire, he did a far better job connecting on Stump than Mitt Romney or a lot of other folks did. I'm not saying that he's the guy. I'm just saying he's the best to understand how perception and reality meet when you're on the campaign trail. Now, that being said, when we look at the other side of the aisle here, and we're pulling up a, a, a poll number right now that's coming to us from Zogby Analytics. Hillary Clinton at 47 percent right now. Chris Christie at 33 uh, percent. Can Christie out compassion Hillary Clinton? Well, let's be honest. Hillary Clinton has one thing in, in, really on her side, and that is unmarried women. And what is Christie's going to have to do, or Jeb Bush, or whoever, whoever the GOP nominee is saying, putting a woman in the White House is not as important as rebuilding the economy, but you have to walk a very fine line. You have to understand that, that, that Hillary Clinton has really got a lock on unmarried female voters, and the key here is going to be able to find as many ways to 270 electoral votes through combinations of Hispanics and white blue collar voters that you need in the tent. And obviously, Hillary Clinton is out there trying to make herself compassionate with her new book and really spin this narrative. And Republicans have to really keep an eye on her because she really has the advantage, you know, heading into 2016. Do you think, for that voters will remember, though, that while they are voting in Hillary, in a sense, they're voting in a partnership of Hillary and Bill, in, in a way? Well, that's something that actually Hillary wants voters to remember. Remember, half the electorate that will be voting in 2016 wasn't even really alive or that cognizant when, it, when Bill Clinton was in the White House. But for older voters who've soured on the Democrats' economic plans, which, again, as I noted earlier, according to Gallup, Republicans have a sizable lead on, th those were economic good times, and that's really what she's trying to do. She's trying to bring along this rising Democratic majority along with a, you know, a lot of older white voters that Bill Clinton did very well with. And Ford, uh, one thing we probably hear a lot from the Clinton camp is what part of peace and prosperity didn't you like during the uh, Clinton era, as uh, they definitely will try to trade a little bit on that uh, partnership, as Francesca put it, moving ahead in 2016. Ford O'Connor, always great to see you. Got the Hail Mary book up there on the screen a little bit. Check that out if you want to read a little bit more about compassionate conservatism. You can check out Ford's book. Great to talk to you, man. Thank you, John. Talk soon, my friend. All right, we'll talk to Ford again next week as we do every Wednesday to get his insight on a little different take on the party. I kind of feel bad a little bit because J.D. was not here to defend the base of the party on this immigration <laughs> issue, but I'm sure we'll have some True. things to say when we get him back here on the desk.
We're coming right back real shortly, but we also want to hear from you on the topic of immigration. What do you think? In-state tuition for undocumented students? We'd like to get your take at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum on Twitter or on Facebook, facebook.com backslash Newsmax TV.